It's been a good run, guys. It's been a good run. We're going to have to unsuspend the Los Angeles Lakers discussion from this podcast because they did officially. But we're win. talking beepers. We're talking Lakers because they did hire a coach and Darvin Ham had his introductory press conference. And, um, you know, yeah, that's hey, what do you guys team... remember when uh, Russ used to defend at a championship level? I don't think I had a league pass back then. <laughs> no, he was at UCLA. Oh, okay. Oh, man. Well, when Darvin, so Russ first off came to the press conference. That is always relevant when a player comes to the press conference. Russ, uh, and I was Austin watching... Reeves, uh, old Winion Gabriel, their, their whole bench unit came to the press conference. <laughs> Stanley Johnson was there. Uh, you know, when Wenyan Gabriel comes to your press conference, he's blessing the hire. I actually, I actually like Wenyan. I always remember when he had to start for the, uh, for the Blazers in the uh, playoffs in the bubble and <laughs> the, the, the Blazers were really banged up. Remember Dame went home and everything. They were playing the Lakers and uh, Wenyan went up to the referee and he's like, I'm starting, I'm starting. He was, he was so excited. He had to tell somebody um, anyway. Uh, it's as if it wasn't already writing on the wall that for the time being that Russ is in the Lakers plans, the fact that Darwin, that Russ came and that Darwin right in front of Russ standing in the room talked about him and in the, how he's in their plans. Um, obviously I think they're still looking for a trap door to open. Um, and there will be maneuvers this off season. There's going to be players, especially with big salaries. I think that are, that might move around a little bit, but the Lakers have pivoted because there was a time where there was a faction of that organization, which was like, we are, we are done with Russell Westbrook. He, he can't come back. That's not the prevailing theory right now. The prevailing theory and, and Darwin made it clear and Palinka made it clear that Russ is going to be with them go, uh, going forward. And he even had as McMahon, said he being Darwin he even had like a, a whole pitch for how Russ's new new uh, role was going to be defense first and he mentioned and that sacrifice he, and sacrifice which I'm not sure what that means I hope it means coming off the bench mm, um, good, good luck but the, the 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 stance the the posture that Westbrook had when at the end of the season where he basically was like it's not me, it's you, to everybody in the organization. To hear that, if you're Darvin Ham and Rob Palenka, and then assume that you're going to sell him on some altered role, regardless of what he says, I don't well, buy it, Bontemps. Well, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. For the past 12 years or so, Russell Westbrook has been in control of his situation. Russell Westbrook ain't in control anymore. Like, here's the, this is, I, I think Darvin Ham, like Darvin Ham, now I was on the M NBA Today yesterday, and Dar Malika interviewed Darvin right before and did a great job and asked him about Russ. And he said, when we talked, like you said, when we talked, I used the word sacrifice a lot, and I wanted to defend, like, a cha like McMahon said earlier when he joked, I don't want him to defend at a championship level. I think he said he wants to defend like a pit bull. Like he was he like, said, I want to be said, that hey, kind I of player. get back to defending at yes. a championship level. Yeah, it was like, and it was like, all right, like, yes, that's the stuff that this guy needs to try to do at this point to be effective. And here's the deal. If Russell Westbrook doesn't want to do that, if he doesn't want to do what Darvin Ham says he needs him to do, the Lakers can just send him home. Mm -hmm. He's on an expiring contract. This is not a thing where, you know, Washington trades for him and has to find a way to make it work because he's got two plus years left on his deal or the Lakers trade for him and he has two years left on his deal and they have to make it work or he gets traded to Houston. and He's got three years left and he's got to make it work. This guy is on an expiring contract. His biggest value to the Lakers is that between now and next February's trade deadline, they can trade him for something else. That's what he's there to be. And in the meantime, if he wants to have a career, after this deal is done, he's got to find a way to be a useful NBA player. It's just that simple. Because right now, he's not a useful NBA player in any way, shape, or form. And so that, to me, is what Russell Westbrook has to decide. We've, I've mentioned the Allen Iverson comparison so many times on the pod over the past year or two. Allen Iverson got to a point where it was like, hey, Allen, you could be a six man and come off the bench and score. Allen took his ball and went home. Like, is Russ going to do that? Or is he going to reinvent himself and find a way to 
use his athleticism to find other ways to be a useful player. Well, here's not. the thing about the, everything that you're saying is right. But I, I question how long is the leash? Because last year they stuck with Westbrook and stuck with Westbrook and stuck with Westbrook. And no matter what you want to say about Frank Vogel, I don't know how Russ could have been mad at him because Frank, and I know that he, you know, okay, a couple of times he benched him going down the stretch and Russ complained and said his back was hurt from sitting on the bench. And so he skipped the game, right? He stuck with Russ way longer than he had any, any, you know, rational reason to. Other than Russ, the front office is breathing down his neck. I, mean, I don't on. know the, the front office, I think gave him permission to bench him and he Look, stuck I'm, with, him. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, this is a but new I mean, seriously. I, I'm not, but so he, what you're saying, I think is right. You're, you're making a very, ex, you know, tactful experienced view of it. But my question is how long are you going to wait? Think it's, I think it's going to be months? short. Three games. I think, can I, can I tell you what I remember most about Jason Kidd's introductory press conference in Dallas? Him just going on and on about how Chris Tapps Porzingis is the perfect co-star for Luka Doncic, blah, 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 blah. Oh, the unicorn, this, that, and the other. In other words, like, could Darvin Ham be blowing smoke up everybody's posterior? Well, I, oh, no. I, but the, you try to make I didn't, it work with Russ, and then you pull right. the cord when, you know. That's the thing. I didn't take it as Darvin blowing smoke. Like, to me... Darvin Ham laid out how Russell Westbrook can be a useful player for the Lakers. And it's like, okay, here's your choice, Russ. You can find a way to have a role in this team, or you're not going to have a role in this team. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.